it's uh, an incredible time of year uh, right now. Uh, we are very, very excited. Uh, we're about a week and a half out from uh, the official start, although we have um, had a little bit of an early start uh, from our trip over to Greece uh, this summer in August, which was amazing. And um, the only uh, uh, athlete that was not with us on that trip was Henna. Uh, she was at uh, home in Finland uh, representing her country playing basketball. But uh, got a really good look at our squad uh, for this upcoming season. Uh, got a lot of uh, very interesting, talented pieces. Uh, got some big shoes to fill with uh, the departure of uh, Grace Berger, but uh, very, very confident uh, that we um, have added some really great pieces in Lene and Jules and Charnice. Um, and so we are just um, really excited about what's ahead of us. Our schedule is incredibly difficult, but um, uh, that's how we want it. And um, I'm just uh, happy to be up here with Sid and Sarah today. Um, for the, the start of uh, what's going to be, I think, an exciting season. All right, we'll go ahead and take questions for Sydney Parrish and Sarah Scalia. Uh, we've got a question in the back. Andrew? Lou, go ahead. Uh, how did you guys, how long did it take you to get over the feeling of disappointment of losing to Miami in the home playoff game when you had such optimistic feelings going into the tournament? Um, I don't think we're over it, and I think that's kind of going to, um, you know, <laughs> put us on a good first step into the season because I don't think you can get over it after the great season we had during the regular season and the postseason. Um, so I really, for me at least, I'm not over it. People still mention it a lot, and it kind of hurts. So um, I think that'll just be another thing that drives us through the season. Amanda? Uh, for either or both of you, what are the biggest things that you were able to take away from that trip to Greece over the summer from a basketball standpoint? Sarah, do you want to start? Um, I think, yeah, it just helped bring our team together, uh, not only on the court but off the court too, just spending a lot of time together. Um, and it was just a good start to be able to uh, play with, you know, the team that we're about to play with this year um, and just kind of get to know each other more and uh, build that chemistry. Sydney, do you want to add? Um, just going off of Sarah, I think it really helped um, our team chemistry more than anything. Uh, it, I mean, obviously it's important to play together on the court, but getting really close with the freshmen and the transfers coming in, um, I think that is really what's going to separate us from kind of what we started with last year compared to this year. Ravi, when you get the mic, go ahead. Yeah, for both Sydney and, and, and Sarah, um, are you, or in women's basketball, I think it's Eight consecutive 21 seasons now, five consecutive tournaments, two Sweet 16s and Elite Eight. What's it been like to be a part of sort of like the group that took IUM's basketball to the national stage, and why do you think it has happened? Um, I mean, yeah, it's definitely something like really special to be a part of. Um, you know, what we do here is is not like many other uh, schools. And I mean, we put in the work to get to where we have been. Uh, you know, it's not just lucky that we win that many games a year. So um, it's, it's good to see like the work that our team puts in uh, pay off as, as we go into the season. Going off of that, I just think that um, players like Grace Berger and Mackenzie Holmes, they kind of set the foundation. And you know, me and Sarah came in as transfers last year. So um, I think we're lucky that our staff and kind of those players that built it for us and we just kind of joined the ride last year, so it's been really fun for us to uh, be a part of such a special group and a special program. Zach. Zach Osterman, Indianapolis Star, for either of you. Kind of following on from that, when you bring in transfers, when you bring in obviously accomplished high school recruits, I guess basically what's the process of, of helping them understand where the expectation level is when you talk about players that came before who set a foundation and now you're building on that. Basically, how do you pass that on? Um, I think that our coaching staff does a really good job in the recruiting process, um, letting them know what our standards are in this program, and uh, they come in, you know, knowing what work needs to be put in and what needs to be done on the court and off the court. Um, so I really think it starts from our coaching staff and how they recruit and who they're recruiting, 
Um, and I think like Chardonnay, Jules, and Linnea have done an amazing job coming in and already putting in so much hard work. And you know, they're they're special and they're a good group to have in this program. Ladies, I have a question to your right, third row. Guys, both of you second seasons here. How comfortable are you guys going into this season as opposed to last season, especially after the way things ended last year? A lot more comfortable this season. Um, we had seven new girls last year come on the team, so it was. I think we we're all just super nervous. We really didn't know what to expect. Um, we had never played together. We had a lot of injuries last summer, so this summer just, um, you know, like going to Greece helped a lot. Playing with each other, those extra practices we got. Um, and just getting to know each other more on a personal level. Uh, I think we're a lot more comfortable going into this season and we're really excited. Todd. Todd Golden, CNHI, Sydney and Sarah, you can both address this. I mean, as Sydney said, I mean, the focus is always on the end of the season. That's what lingers, but the vast majority of what this team did last year was positive. So how do you build, take that and contextualize that and build on that while also kind of feeding off the hunger a little bit of the end too? Um, yeah, I think just the biggest thing is to just not like necessarily be satisfied with how we ended last year, but also like realize how much we accomplished. Like we did a lot of good things last year. We can't just let, you know, one game, you know, dictate how, how well we did throughout the season. But um, I think just going into this year is just keep, I mean, doing what we've been doing, taking it game by game. Uh, and obviously our end goal is to play our best basketball by the end of the year, so we're going to keep uh, striving towards towards doing that. Seth? Uh, for either of you, just you know, coming off the season that, and the career that Mackenzie's already had, just how did you see her kind of approach the off season, and you know, how much do you think she's capable of this year? I mean, she is an All-American, so it's pretty fun to play with an All-American, and uh, she's just one of the hardest workers I've ever played with um, and been around. Uh, she's always in the gym, whether that's extra conditioning, extra lifting, extra workouts, um, making sure her body is healthy, being in the training room. So uh, she definitely is a very, very special player, and I'm just really excited to see how she um, plays this year with us. And I mean, we couldn't be more grateful to have her on the court with us for another year. So thank you, Mackenzie, for coming back. <laughs> All right, Sarah and Sydney, thank you. Thank you. you guys are just Go ahead and raise your hand for questions for Coach Morin. Zach. Zach Ross from Indianapolis Star. I guess sort of a, a similar question for you, and, and Jeff talked about just how progressively you've built this program over the last few years. What, if anything, is different about the way you talk about culture, the way you preach it, the way you build it, when maybe there's no more, I want to say there's no more climbing to do, but you are a lot closer to kind of the top of the mountain, and it's more about staying there and sort of, you know, setting yourself in. Well, I think you have to continue to uh, be able to articulate to recruits, prospects, how we got here um, and um, what, we, what we believe uh, that are the standards in our program and, and why we are to the place that we are. Uh, but, but Sid said it perfectly. I mean, you have to find the recruits that are about the things that we value. And that's the work piece. That's the character piece. Um, that's the team piece. Um, and so, um, you know, it's as we all know uh, in athletics, it's one thing um, to to build it. It's another thing to sustain it. So, uh, recruiting has changed for us in terms of the um, the talent pool that we're now recruiting. Uh, we're up against the very best. Uh, we wouldn't have it any other way. Um, but we still um, are who we are. We're the team that um, has always prided itself in its work ethic. We're the team that will continue to play with the chip on its shoulder. We're the team that um, kind of feels like we still have so much to uh, achieve. Um, and um, that's why we're, we are who we are, uh, is because we, we walk in to whether it's Cook Hall or Assembly Hall every day, um, with this, um, this workman-like uh, attitude that um, we haven't achieved, achieved anything yet. And um, that's, that's what I love about our team and their mindset. Um, you know, there's still, as we always say, there's more work to be done. Amanda. Coach, this time last year, you pointed to Chloe Moore McNeil as a, 
player who is primed to have a breakout season. Mm -hmm. I'm curious at this point, is there another player on the team that you think is in a similar position? Right. Yeah, and I was right, right? <laughs> um, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I don't know that um, I, I feel like, um, you know, with the, the returners that we have, the experience that we have, the vets that we have, here's what I do know. Um, the three that we brought in, those new kids, are going to have to help us. And they're going to have to uh, grow up quicker than, than normal. Um, and, um, you know, we usually say by the time that they, they return from Christmas break, you're no longer freshmen. You know, you got to, you got to, be wiser and and, um, and you have to grow up faster. But uh, you know, I think we're going to need the three of them uh, from the beginning, uh, right out of the gates, to to show up and and give us really good minutes. And I think they're capable of that. Coach, question right in front of you in the back. Hey, Coach Mason Horneski with WHS 11 in Louisville. Uh, you being a part of that FIBA team that just took home gold. Uh, first of all, what was that experience like, and was there anything that you took away from a coaching standpoint, watching the overseas games and overseas sure. teams that you want to implement here? Well, you know, being a part of USA Basketball is always a special invite. Um, you know, anytime you have the opportunity to um, uh, represent your country, that's that's a big deal. I will say that Madrid, Spain, which was far different from Greece, um, but nonetheless, they were still both really, really uh, great trips. Um, the uh, trip to Spain was more of a, a work trip, though. And um, yes, to, in order to go over there and um, you know win a gold, you're going to be up against um, some really great international teams. And uh, what I always love about that experience, um, being on the, the uh, you know having to, to prep and do scatter reports, uh, you pick up a lot of subtle things that they do over there in terms of their spacing, how they play, uh, and you hope that you can come back and you know put, put some of those into place with your own team. Uh, but um, it was a summer of, you know, you always want to get better, you know, just like as a team, uh, as, as the coach here, I, you know, I'm always looking for opportunities to get a little bit better. And, um, the, you know, being over there uh, in Colorado for a week and then certainly in Spain for two weeks served the purpose of of me becoming what I hope is a, is a better basketball coach. Coach, question in the front. Zion Brown, Indy Star. Terry, when you look back now that you've been a little farther removed now at the end of the season, those three close losses you guys had, mm -hmm. what do you feel like kind of went wrong for you guys in those late game situations? Uh, I don't know that I've, you know, um, well, a couple different things happened. Uh, you know, when we were at Iowa, um, you know, for the for the end of that, that was a little bit. Um, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. And would you do do you know something differently in terms of schematically? We we might have done that. Um, it was unfortunate. You know, Chloe falls falls down, uh, can't get to Caitlin quick enough, and she has to shoot one hell of a shot in order to beat us. You know, at their place. Um, and then you know you fast forward to um, I'm I'm going to assume you're talking about the Big Ten tournament. You know where where Mac um, gets dinged up in the first round against Michigan State, and she's not the same McKenzie against Ohio State. Um, and um, and then we um, we go into the NCAA tournament um, with McKenzie not practicing for 12 days before we play. And so uh, even though you know she doesn't play the first round against. Um, Tennessee Tech, she plays, you know, starts in the first half, a little bit rusty, had to get her feet, which we knew was going to be the case. Um, but we didn't get off to a very good start there either. You know, you got to give credit where credit's due. Miami came out and punched us pretty, pretty good in that first half, and we didn't respond. But we did play from behind. We uh, made it a game. I thought um, we had a, a chance there. Um, it could have easily have gone into overtime, but it didn't. Um, and um, you know, I think to hear these guys talk about it, it's something that they remember. It's something that motivates them. Um, but, um, you know, for me, I think uh, as I've gotten older uh, in this game, I think I'm more wise um, in that one game. Those three games don't define the season that we had. Um, it was incredible. Um, and, you know, I don't want to 
take anything away from, from that. You know, you win the first ever Big Ten championship in 40 years. Um, you get the number one seed, never happened in this program. So there's a lot of things that could have, you know, my, you might list that did go wrong, but there, that list of the, all the things that went right is far greater. Rick, to your left here, Coach. Yeah, Terry, Rick Bozich over Rick, here. Where are we at? Oh, right eight. Right. Yep. How are you from I'm WDRB great. in Louisville? Yep. Um, the growth in terms of interest in this program has been exponential over the last few years. Um, I think this year you're going to more reserve seating. Um, do you sense that? Do your players sense that when you're out around the community or state? And how much more can it grow? Yeah, it's interesting how, how often um, prior to us going to re reserve seating, um, how often that I do get stopped and ask, um, well, first of all, how uh, much they enjoy watching our program. But then there's always that follow-up question, what are you going to do with the seating problem? What are you going to do with the parking problem? Um, and, um, you know, as I always tell them, I, I have a bigger job, and that's to coach women's basketball, and I will take their concerns elsewhere. And, and we've done that, um, and uh, we're excited, you know, that we've, um, um, I wouldn't say created problems, because I think Scott would tell you that it is not a problem at all. Uh, to have to have reserve seating and parking uh, for women's basketball. Um, but, um, you know, it, it did become a little bit of an issue uh, because our fans, you know, we try to get down here um, and warm up and, and 90 minutes prior to tip off, there's a line of people that are trying to hustle down here to get great seats. Um, that to me is a great problem to have. Um, but um, yeah, we're, we're um, obviously thrilled and we're grateful that uh, it's turned it's turned into what it what it's become and uh, you know I think I can speak for our entire program but especially those players that play there's nothing like being in Simon Scott Assembly Hall uh, playing in front of our fans. Seth. Coach just you know Mackenzie's got a chance real chance to pass Tyra and become the program's all-time leading scorer just mm -hmm. you know with I know part of this answer is going to, or most of it could depend on, you know, teams, team results this sure. year, but just what sort of legacy has she already built here and what sort of legacy do you think she can leave behind? Well, you know, to be the first All-American is, you know, you can end there, right? Um, but, um, you know, I, again, the best part of my job is watching our players come in as freshmen and then watching their transformation or the evolution of them as as players and also as people uh, and um, and so Max has been such a great story you know as far as when she came in here and she couldn't give anybody eye contact and she was very shy and timid and uh, I don't think it was until probably halfway through Big Ten season her freshman year where she started becoming um, just a little bit not as confident as she is but a little bit more confident that she could play at this level um, and I don't know in her wildest dreams if she ever thought that she could become the All-American that she's become here. Um, but Sid hit it on the head. You only do that one way, and that's to, to get in here and do your work uh, every single day. Uh, and so she and Coach Rhett have continued to, um, you know, every day. Days off, there's no such thing for Mackenzie. And, um, and so she is, um, should be really... Um, you know, proud of herself. I know I'm extremely proud of her, not for the player that she's become, for the person that she's become, um, and how she's she's gone about, the, you know, her work. And, um, and she's, you know, pure example of there's no secret sauce to any of it. You know, it's what you your habits are every single day. And um, I think her legacy will be one that Grace Berger left us. And um, how you build this is. Uh, by coming in and and um, and wanting to do the work, wanting to be passionate about the work, wanting to be passionate about this place, uh, and helping us be successful, and whatever that looks like, whatever it takes, they'll do. And so she will um, uh, has a chance, you know, to become the all-time leading scorer. Nobody's going to be cheering for her harder than I will be. We've got another question to your left over here. Go ahead, um, Chloe Peterson, Indy Star. Mm -hmm. Sydney kind of alluded to it, but is there a sense of unfinished business when it comes into the season after the early exit from the NCAA tournament? Yeah, you know, I think, again, she answered it, um, you know, for all of us, for all of those players especially. Um, you know, I think Lene and Jules and, and Sharnice certainly weren't a part of that, but, you know, I, there's no question with the chemistry and the closeness 
of this group that uh, they've had conversations regarding that. Um, and so that's okay, you know, for them to, to uh, it can't be all of their motivation because, like I said, I don't want it to take away from all the other great things that we accomplished a year ago, but, um, you know, certainly if uh, they want to use it for fuel, um, I'm okay with that. Hi, Coach. Kyle, Sports Report Hi, Kyle. Media. Um, you've got the five banners behind you for men. Mm -hmm. Obviously, IU men have been a leader for years. Here you are setting the stage now for IU women. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you and this program to know that they reach out to you now as Indiana's one of the leaders when it comes to women's basketball? Well, we're, you know, I'm extremely grateful. Uh, none of it's done without having a great staff. None of it uh, uh, can be done without having uh, great players and then you know, great support from whether it's Scott, Maddie, all of it, you know, Lo, um, Kevin, our strength conditioning, you know, coach, uh, Ben, our athletic trainer. I mean, it takes, it takes a small village to do something, uh, you know, like we've been able to do, and I'm so grateful for all those people. Um, you know, it's cool that, that I can represent us and I can talk about Indiana women's basketball. And, you know, when, when Coach Rhett and I arrived here nine years ago, it's hard to believe we're going into our 10th season. Um, you know, we always said we wanted to, um, the tradition had always been on the men's side and we wanted to build our own tradition. So when people spoke of Indiana basketball, it wasn't exclusive just to men's basketball. Um, and anybody that knows me knows that I'm a huge Indiana men's basketball fan, but um, you know, one of the goals here was for us to create this excitement uh, in Bloomington, in Indianapolis, in the surrounding areas that people wanted to come uh, and watch Indiana women's basketball. So to sit here and be able to say, uh, you know, now that uh, the state of Indiana has two teams that they can be really proud of uh, means a lot. Todd. Todd Golden, CNHI. Hi, Todd. You know, I wanna, hi, how are you? Um, I want to take that one step further. Uh, you know, when Mike was talking about his expectations for his team, he was talking about, you know, adding a banner and Big Ten championships and all that. It struck me, though, that nothing would be more meaningful than the first banner for right. women's basketball. Yeah. Are you ready to embrace that expectation? Do you feel like the team is ready to embrace that expectation uh, for this season? There's no, there's no question. Um, you know, I said it a year ago, I think at Hoosier uh, Hysteria, that we wanted, you know, one of those uh, back there. And I'll... Um, you know, uh, continue to say it. We've been so close. You know, anytime that you um, uh, have the opportunity to, um, to uh, you know, get to a Sweet 16, get to an Elite Eight, the way we have, and you realize it's just that one one game, you know, and you're, at a, you're playing for a Final Four, you're playing for a national championship. And so, um, you know, we've, we've tasted it, if you will. We, we know what it takes to get there. Um, and, um, you know, there's no question that we have everything we need in order to be able to do that, to win a national championship. Um, and so I think everybody's excited. Um, you know, I think maybe uh, pundits, you know, on the outside, maybe, you know, Grace Burgers, uh, those are some huge uh, shoes to fill. But, um, you know, I still really, really like our pieces. And, um, uh, you know, I, I'll bet on these guys uh, knowing what I've uh, – by seeing what I've been able to see with them inside of practice, um, I do think we have a chance. Elsie. Uh, Elsie Norton, SB Nation. Just going through the transfer portal process, what really stood out to you about Sharnice, just her game, who she is as a person? Yeah, you know, I think um, one of the concerns with uh, for us was how do we um, uh, help, how do we protect Mac a little bit uh, in terms of her rep, reps? Um, and, um, and so I think going out and finding a post player that can come in like Sharnice, obviously she was a terrific player at UT Martin, um, and um, you know has the statistics to back some of that up. But I really feel like we needed to have another post player um, that could come in and not just help us, but take some of those reps away from, from McKenzie. Um, and I think Max back there, she's not gonna like to hear that, but, um, the, the reason is, is because we know that the last two years, you know, Mac has battled some issues or injuries down the stretch. And so um, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to call it load management, 
um, but I will say that um, we we try to have to we're gonna have to try to protect Mac as well as we can in practices, long practices. This is a long season, and a lot of those reps are gonna be you know uh, going to Charnice, and so I think you're gonna see a young lady in Charnice that's gonna continue to improve inside of our program and uh, really really help us. Um, but great kid, um, she and Chloe played. Uh, summer ball together, so good friends there. Um, another kid from the Tennessee area, and so we're we're excited. She has a tremendous upside to her. Zach. Zach Oster again in Indianapolis Star. Asking about another player specifically, Yarden. Um, obviously, a really good freshman season. If maybe sometimes it felt like with all the the experienced talent around her, maybe people didn't give yeah. her enough attention. Yeah. How have you challenged her to push herself on this season? Where? When you've got someone that has scored, rebounded, and shot the ball like she did as a freshman, where do you tell her, let's grow this area of your game next? Well, yeah, I think one of the particular areas, and she's been working with AP a lot um, in her player development, is, um, you know, she obviously shot the ball, as you mentioned, Zach, at a really high, high clip. But, um, you know, I want to be able to utilize her like we use Grace Berger as a post, right? And uh, there was often times that we would... We felt good about the matchup that Grace had on her, and um, uh, we had play calls that would send Grace to the low block, play with her back to the basket. Uh, and so we feel like um, we could do some unique things because you know she's a, a big guard and put her in positions uh, with her back to the basket and, and not always revert back to her little fadeaway, that international fadeaway that she brought with her from Israel, right? We want her to, uh, play with more moxie, play with more t more tenacity, and, and as we call it in our practices, put people in the basket, which means you, you play through contact, uh, you score, you get yourself to the free throw line. And, um, and so that's really been the, the summer, uh, that, her conditioning, um, her strength. You know, when she showed up in uh, Greece, I felt like she had gotten taller, but it wasn't that her height changed, her shoulders had changed. She filled out um, in her shoulders, and so Kevin and her trainer over in Israel stayed in contact those couple months that she was back there, um, and so she really um, has filled out shoulder-wise. She's still shooting the ball really well, um, but um, I'd like to be able to be creative with her, um, you know, like I said, with her back to the basket a little bit more where she can um, take advantage of her size. Last question to you right here, Coach. Alexa Ross, CBS 4, Fox 59. We talked last year about how there was excitement about the group that was coming in, but just some questions just because there were so many new pieces. Now these, now it's not that way. There are just fewer new pieces, and how much more comfortable are you guys going into this season and knowing that you can continue building upon what you did last season? Yeah, you know, I think Sid hit it on the head again. Anytime that you can take international trips the way we did, it just helps. Um, you know, with um, those new kids. And when Lene and Jules, you know, they already understood in Charnese the work piece, but, um, you know, just the time that you can spend together and getting to know one another, there's a real, um, not just camaraderie, but the chemistry. Uh, this is a group that really enjoys being around each other. Um, you know, we just had a, a recruit in over the weekend, and it's not often that, um, you know, they they would they left my house to go and I think get ice cream or do something. It's not often that you have your entire team do that, right? It's usually the host and maybe two or three other teammates, um, but the entire team went. And so that's unusual, you know, especially when you have some older kids like we have with Mac. You know, Mac's a fifth year, she's been here forever, but Mac's always wanted to be a part of the process, recruiting process for us. Um, and I, I think that that's where it starts. There's a specialness that this group has that they really, really enjoy one another. And, um, you know, in doing this as long as I have, that will translate onto the floor. You know, teams that like each other team to, uh, seem to be teams that play well with one another. All right. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thank you, guys. One